Hello, welcome to week eight. Um, it's good to see you guys. We're at the halfway mark, which is pretty exciting. And um, things are going to move fast for the rest of the term. Illustrator, humongous, tons of stuff to learn, tons of fun. Um, you should be wrapping up your Photoshop project this week. And that's what our um, um, focus is gonna be for this Zoom to make sure that everyone has a chance um, to ask any questions that they have specifically about the project, but then also about Photoshop in general before we um, wrap it up. You will get a chance to use Photoshop um, with your Illustrator project and then later with your InDesign project if you want. It's not going to be a requirement, but you'll see that there are opportunities to um, continue to use what you've learned in Photoshop so far, which um, will be kind of nice. Um, as I was saying before um, class started regarding your project, your final grade um, won't be put in until after Sunday's due date. And I'm going to take into consideration the um, peer reviews that you've posted to your classmates, as well as your sketches and your final advertisement. So you have the rest of this week to polish, to make any changes, improvements, whatever you've submitted so far, you can resubmit. You don't have to ask me. You can completely change your mind and go in a different direction if that's what you choose to do. Um, this is the week to do it, and that's all part of the design process. I am going to sneeze, I think. <laughs> so sorry. Uh, no, it's gone. <laughs> um, um, so that said, I want to take the opportunity during this Zoom for anyone who wants feedback, additional feedback, to share their screen, to show what they've done so far, to ask questions um, of us, and you know, like any feedback, you know, or areas that you want help with, um, we are here to give it to you. And I want to do that um, for about a half an hour if we need that much time. And then I also want to answer any final Photoshop questions if anyone has any. And before I do that, I want to just show you very quickly um, something that I can't remember if I've showed you yet and want to make sure that you have a chance to see it. So I'm sharing my screen right now. What you guys should see is my Creative Cloud app window. Does everyone see that? So, OK, cool. Um, so this is where it shows what apps you have loaded onto your computer. It shows all of the Creative Cloud apps that are available, um, which is a ton. And I feel like it just grows every day. Um, you have a tab across the top for your work for um, your libraries that you've created so far, and then areas where you can learn more and buy more. But what I wanted to show you primarily um, before I forget and before we get too deep in is on the apps kind of homepage, this sidebar here where you can get to the, st the Adobe stock um, and a bunch of other stuff. You can also get to tutorials. And I wanted to make sure that you guys knew this was there because one click to tutorials takes you to um, the, let's see here, here it is, takes you to the um, Adobe website and their tutorials homepage where there is just tons and tons of tutorials available to you. And I wanted to make sure you guys knew that these were here because if you want to continue to learn more and if you have questions about things and we've already moved on, this is where you can go to get even more um, how to's and really short, really to the point tutorials of how to do things. Um, and they're sorted by beginner and experience. And then they, you can also sort them by application. So you can go and just look at Photoshop um, tutorials or just Illustrator tutorials. And they're really great. Um, some of the teachers I like better than others, but it is a really good resource. And I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that that was there. So, and I'm sorry for Mochi because she won't shut up. I don't know why. Go away. Go away. She, um, yeah, it's new. It's new that she does this and wants to talk to me. She doesn't ever want to talk to me and now she does. So, sorry guys. 
All right, so I showed you Creative Cloud. That note to myself is done. So um, who would like to share their screen, show us the advertisement, where you're at right now, um, and kind of get additional feedback um, on, on their advertisement and any additional help. Um, also, if you just have questions and want to want to accomplish a technique that's not quite working out, um, that's something we can address now as well. Um, I, I have a problem where I noticed that when I was some, when I um, more the image from resolution to 300 to 72, it looked kind of blurry. Yes. And I was a little concerned about that. I submitted it anyways, but I was like, hmm, maybe I should check on with the teacher to make sure if it's that's normal to happen because I was using because someone already sent me there, so I was like, okay, I'm using this reference to make sure I'm doing this right, because mm -hmm. there's a clear, I can see what's going on. Mine, I'm like, okay, the reference photo looks fine, but the bottom part, I'm like, okay, it's not working, so what the heck happened? Looked a little blurry. So I did what, the reason that I have you downsize or kind of reduce the um, resolution of your photo before you upload it is so that it's a small enough size to upload. Otherwise, I've had um, students upload their full size, forgetting to reduce it, the resolution and trying to upload like a 40 megabyte um, final advertisement that then takes me forever to try to download. Um, not really 40, it was probably 400 because 40 would be no problem. Mochi, jeez. Um, so it should be fine viewing it on the screen because 72 DPI is screen resolution and what we need to look at it but if you're at all concerned and if you're losing you feel that it's losing like part of the ad or part of you know what you've created you can try 150 and split the difference and see if that makes your file small enough to upload without losing um, any of the art that you've created and that all would right. be completely fine all right thank you i was a little concerned about that because like it's my first time like doing resolution like that so sure. like oh just right. Yeah. Question. When you zoom in for sure, you've got, you know, less than a third of the amount of pixels per square inch that you did when you started, but it makes it a lot easier to share, you know, share that photo across, um, across the internet, which is why we do it that way. And in the future, like when you're working um, with a client or sharing photos, even sharing photos, you know, with friends, you're um, resolution is an issue. And if you're working on a website, resolution is an issue. Um, you want to keep it so that it loads quickly and so that people aren't waiting to download or to see your image um, or waiting to download your proof. A lot of um, people's firewalls will cap the size of the attachments. And if your attachment is too large, it won't deliver you know, your proof or your photo. So it's good to know how to downsize your work without losing, um, sacrificing quality. And if you look at it on the screen and in Photoshop, there's a, um, I don't even have Photoshop open. Let me open it. There is a, um, a view option to look at your um, image at 100% and then also to look at it at print size. And it's just under the view menu. And that gives you a good idea of what it really looks out. Because when you zoom way in, of course, it's going to be you know, blurry at 72 DPI, but viewing it at 100% and also at print size will give you like a solid like representation of what the viewer might see on the other end of your of your email or or in this case on the other end of Canvas. So. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, who else? I know somebody said they wanted additional feedback and was interested in sharing. I would, yeah. I Christina and Morgan, both? Okay. All right, cool. Let's start with um, Morgan. If you want to share your screen, and then I want yeah. to, and then we can see what you have. And then um, everyone will just kind of take turns or try not to talk over each other to give Morgan um, any feedback. And Morgan, okay. just tell can us you guys a little see? bit. Yeah, we can see it and tell us a little bit about it. Okay, so I just found this picture of this man online and I added in the AirPod and the AirPods case and obviously all the text. Um, I just, this is just the first idea I came up with and just don't listen to the haters and listen to your AirPods, you know? Yeah. Um, right. 
yeah, I would welcome any like feedback or changes. So was your, um, this is a perfect um, execution of the assignment and what you were supposed to do. Did the AirPods photo have that um, box behind it? No, I just added that to kind of make it like pop off of the okay. busier background. Gotcha. So one thing that I would suggest that you might consider instead of a whole box would be to just paint a shadow behind it to okay. make it pop because that'll darken um, the scene behind it and help it to pop off without having um, the box. Alternately, because the box isn't necessarily bad, you might just consider making sure since everything is kind of centered within the box that you yeah. also center your headline over it. And if you can see to the left of um, the subject's head, there's kind of a big empty space mm -hmm. at the top amongst the trees. And that maybe you want to kind of like blow your headline up to fit within that space if you're not going to center them where they are. Because yeah. then it be a little bit off and you can make your headline a definite headline. One of the things that you guys always want to refer, um, refer or kind of um, address whenever you're doing a design is your hierarchy. And I know that we covered that a little bit back in the elements and principles, but the way to establish the hierarchy is often um, with size. And then the other way is with the placement within, you know, the real estate and of your um, design. And so you could create a, more of a hierarchy if you just kind of increase the size of your headline and move it up a little um, to give it more difference between the AirPods image and the headline itself. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you think like different. the whitish color between the trees would like conflict with the white text or? If it does, that's another opportunity to add a drop shadow behind the okay. words to give it, or you could try changing the colors of the words. You can make the colors of the, you know, like every few letters a different color of the rainbow or that's cool yeah go to like sample the blue of the tent um that's behind the airpods just try a few things and see see what makes it what's going to make it okay. pop and what's going to add to your design okay so, sorry that was a lot of feedback for me please yeah no that's me. good thank you <laughs> please give morgan it. some feedback that's not from me um and also bryson is available too okay I did want to suggest. Um, first off, I want to say really, really good job with like inserting the AirPod into the image. It's very convincing and yeah. it's really like nice job with that. Um, I just wanted to give kind of like a third option to what Nikki already said, which was um, if you made the box a little bit taller, you might be able to fit the um, headline into it. And I wouldn't recommend scaling the headline down. I would recommend putting it on two lines if that makes any sense. Okay, yeah, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah, so then it would just be like a box with mm -hmm. the text and the AirPods in it, um, which would just be something to try out and see if it looks good. But overall, okay. really good job. Thank you. Anyone else have um, feedback for Morgan? You kind of stole my idea, but I really like the idea of making the text rainbow too, because you have like all those, like the colors. Yeah, I really like that. I'm definitely going to do that, or at least like try it, how it looks. Try it and see, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. All right. It might be difficult, but you could try to do a, a rainbow gradient instead of having each letter be an individual color. Um, mm -hmm. If you can make the entire line a gradient, that would look pretty mm -hmm. cool, I bet. That would be cool, yeah. Yeah, and the easiest way to do that is to find a stock photo of a rainbow gradient and then create a mask with oh, your okay. yeah, you're right. text. Yeah, that's way easier than trying to apply it or try to create your own gradient. Um, it's kind of a shortcut, but it definitely is the easiest way to do it. You would um, you would create just a mask of you know of the letters onto that rainbow gradient layer and then um there you have it rainbow letters so oh thank you guys yeah sure oh, really, how long did it took you to do the trick with the airpod because that looks great <laughs> that was the image i was like oh that's a good image to choose i'm like oh wait that's the airpod image? <laughs> um it probably took me like 10 minutes or so like it took me a long time to cut out the airpod well because it was it's like such a definite line that it's hard to 
have it look right, especially like with long straight lines along the sides of it. So that was kind of hard, but then like putting it in the ear wasn't that hard. <laughs> Once you had it. Yeah. I just kind of like cut out his little ear flap and then made that like a layer on top. Ah, interesting. Nice. Cool. All right, Morgan. Well, well done. Do you have any other questions for us? No, just like general feedback. Thanks okay. guys. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Christina, um, if you would like to go next, that would, the floor is yours. Let's see. Can you guys see that? Yes. Okay. So uh, the thought behind this is Wittard is a British tea company and they um, do a lot of Alice in Wonderland stuff. So they have cats basically everywhere because it's like the Cheshire cat. <laughs> um, so I put a cat in the picture, obviously. And yeah, if you have any feedback or advice, Really appreciated. Anyone? I have Very a excited cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the picture so much. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Um, my feedback, let's see here. The only thing that I would say would be to maybe consider using a more interesting font for your headline, just okay. because um, it is a little, um, Kind of copy text um, rather than headline or even editorial kind of headline over an advertisement headline and that it might um, because we're talking about you know getting excited over a good cup of tea this might be an opportunity to use something that's a little more whimsical or a little more exciting um, and like you said with the um, alice in wonderland connection that maybe this is an opportunity to use something that is Alice in Wonderlandy, um, and just give that a little bit of a try. The so photo actually, oops, sorry. No, go ahead. I actually did have like a funner font kind of thing. It was very flowy and stuff. Uh, but the peer review, when I got my peer review, it said ah. that I should switch to something less distracting. So uh, I so wonder. Back, am I going to get in trouble for not listening to peer review? <laughs> no, you're not. But you know, okay. one thing to try would maybe to just put the word "everyone" in its own on its own line. Move um, gets excited over a to one line, and then good cup of tea becomes your last line, which is kind of something um, to pay attention to in ads. As something that I always notice. Um, if you're going to look at just a line of text, does it make sense on its own? And good cup of tea is kind of what you're pushing here. And so to have that all on one line on its own line is kind of an extra little something that you can do for your ad. But maybe try having everyone just be in a whimsical font. And then the rest of it is because, you know, there are a, a few words. Maybe those ones are in something more standard and more easy to read. Um, when you do that, also try and see how it looks with different capitalization. Does everyone look good in all caps or should it be just title, you know, case with just the E capitalized? Should the rest of the um, headline have an initial cap, you know, and, and every word except for A and of be capitalized, um, the first letter be capitalized? So maybe you just play around with the headline a little bit. I think the rest of it is really strong. I think the headline just needs a little bit of work. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, what I wanted to suggest is just kind of like to add a little bit more onto what Nikki was saying. Um, does Woodard have advertisements that you could look at for inspiration? Because if their advertisements have like certain font combinations and stuff like that, you mm -hmm. might be able to take inspiration from those. Uh, they don't really have advertisements because they're really, really well known in like oh, Britain and London. And mm -hmm. so here they're not, but if you go there, everyone's like, oh, Wittard, yeah, you know that. <laughs> right. So they don't really advertise. Yeah. But their um, product packaging is like beautiful. If you ever get the chance mm. to look it up, like they have some really cool stuff. I will definitely do that. <laughs> uh, okay. One more thing I want to say, if you want to really kind of like, um, or just this is just an, a suggestion for something that might look good. If you're going to be changing the font of everyone, you might as well make it a little bit bigger and put it on its own line. That might be something that would look interesting. Um, and then you could put every the rest of the text on a single line and maybe scale it down. That might just make add a little bit more visual interest to the text. 
and play around with different shapes in the background instead of just an oval and see if you could like frame it in a different way, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just like some things the, to try out. Yeah, for the record, circles, anything kind of round um, can be tricky with trying to use it to hold text because um, you end up with extra space. And I do kind of think maybe the extra space on either side of the oval right now on either side of the headline is a little distracting and maybe more than you need. You may just need to make it, you know, not as wide of an oval. So yeah, I agree with that, Bryce. And I would, yeah, definitely kind of play with that shape a little bit too, Christina. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you guys. You're welcome. Does anyone else have any feedback no for Christina? Um, not really anything specific, but I was like, you guys mentioned it, that's just like the play around with it, try different things. And I don't really know, like, I don't know what to change or what suggestions, mm -hmm. but it's like, if there was one area of improvement, it would be on the, around the text. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, thank you. Sure. Christina, Morgan. Okay, would anyone else like to share their advertisement and get a little bit of extra feedback? Um, is it okay if I share mine? Absolutely, Josh, let's see it. Um, so this was the original photo I used and I saw that the biker was looking down. So mm -hmm. I figured I could turn it into a public service announcement for oh, NHPSA. Oh, oh. So it's um, um, as an announcement to tell people to look where they're going. I love it. Yeah, that's a really good um, concept. Yeah, absolutely. What was the career gallery? Okay, so I have a couple things. You guys want me to go first? Okay, so one thing that I would um, just kind of think of as a general rule, put this in your back pocket, guys, as a general rule for all of your designs is that you don't wanna overuse all caps. I think that all caps is really good for the headline, but what is a subhead for this, a public service announcement from NHTSA could actually just be initial caps or title case with um, everything just having the first letter capitalized except for NHTSA, which has to be in all caps since it's an anagram. Um, that might bring your subhead all to one line, which I think would also be um, do a good service to your overall design. Um, and then the only other thing I could say is you've got a bit of sky and a bit of room to play that you could make that whole block of text bigger, um, you know, maybe like a quarter or a third of the size bigger and drag it out to the um, down and towards the left or towards the right to fill up some of that space and just to give more attention because advertisement, it is a headline. I mean, that's your your call to action and that's the information that you're trying to get across um, first. So see how it looks and see, um, you know, you don't want it to take away from the image, obviously, and which is a is a powerful image. But um, I think it could definitely be bigger than it is. Um, and the other thing that I might try for this one is to just left hand align your text since the um, ad is a square, just have everything anchored off the left edge of your ad and have it going off to the right and just see how that looks too. It might not look good, but it might be something to try, Josh, that might um, make a stronger headline and just kind of fill the text a little bit different. Um, that's all I really have. Other than that, um, it looks good and it's a good, you could, I mean, this is being really picky, but if you guys can see how the initial image almost has kind of a soft saturation to the color, it's like a tiny bit faded, um, and then the car looks fully saturated and um, very shiny, you could play around a little bit with the filters on the car to get it to the blending options to get it to maybe look like part of that original photo a little bit more, but um, Overall, great job. Yeah. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else have feedback for Josh? Um, can, ooh, can y'all hear me? Yes. 
<laughs> nice. Um, one thing that I would suggest if you want to try it would be maybe moving the NHTSA logo to like the bottom right corner and then for composition it would be like a nice diagonal mm -hmm. sort of. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, but other than that, it looks good. Thanks. Yeah, I like, I like that too. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to mention that as well. It's like one thing you can do is you can move that little logo down to the bottom because the bottom is completely blank, you know, it's just this brown color. So you can move it to like maybe one of the corners or even it's – and just kind of play around with it, just moving it to different spots. Mm -hmm. And then that would open up your sky a lot more. Then you could even move your, your um, you know, your announcement, your yeah. the center. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, right there. Yeah. Yep, good call, you guys. I like it. And because in, um, you know, in all the Western countries, we read from left to right, it is good to end left to right and then top to bottom. It is good to, to end with the logo. So it's like the last thing that people see as their eyes go down um, the advertisement. And then it's kind of more memorable that way. Um, either starting with the logo or ending with the logo is a good is a good practice. So anyone else have any feedback for Josh? Um, yeah. So the background of, do you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, so the background of the sky is really bright. Then if you look like on this side, on the bottom portion of the a photo, it looks really dark. So I think maybe you can try and brighten it up with some sort of filter or something. You could even crop in a little bit and get rid of a little of that foreground. Um, but once you put the logo down there, it is going to be nice for it to be dark because it's going to need to sit on a darker background to be legible. But yeah, that is a consideration too. I like that photo. I like the kind of muted tone of the whole thing. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and then play around with the color of your headline too. Like you might decide um, you want your call to action, always look where you're going, to be bigger and bolder. And you know, it can even be bright, bright yellow. You could sample the um, yellow stripe in the road and see if that's kind of dark enough to go um, in the sky. And just because you know the psychology of color, yellow is a warning kind of a color. Um, which is the nature of this ad to be giving a warning. But excellent, great, you know, you guys are all doing amazing. Very happy with what I'm seeing. Thanks for everyone's feedback. You're welcome, Josh. All right, would anyone else like to share and get some feedback on their ad? Um, can I share mine? Absolutely. Any screen. All right, so I'll do this one. Um, okay, hold on. A screen. Here we go. All right, so this is my final ad. Can you see that? Still loading. There it is. All right. So here's my um final ad. It's an ad for fourocean.com. Um, it's really known for making bracelets and selling them. I actually have one right here. Cool. Like a little bracelet and what they do is for every time you buy for every bracelet that you like every dollar they'll um they'll um they'll pick up a pound of trash from the ocean mm -hmm. and so I, I originally chose um let's see um so here's my original photo right here on the left it's the turtle it's really yeah. kind of zoomed out and it's like this really peaceful kind of scene you know mm -hmm. with all these dark colors and then i'm like yeah, i'm gonna try to completely you know change the picture but and so i decided to put like a little water bottle around it kind of give it the idea of it you know being trapped in the water bottle very cool yeah that's impressive i'm I, yeah it's really well done i like the concept um my advice is again just going to be related to the headline and creating a hierarchy so that you've got you know your call to action and um, then you've got your secondary information. And in this case, you've even got like a third level of information, which is the learn more. And just creating a little bit more interest um, in, your, in your text, whether it's via um, font changes or just size changes. 
Um, and then also make sure they're centered because I think I think they're centered, but also it looks like your um, headline is a little bit off to the right, to the right a little bit. Um, but I love the concept. I love the Photoshop work. Um, it's fantastic. And it's definitely um, like a moving advertisement that makes me want to do something. Um, on the text itself, just a couple of little things. Generally in titles, um, and this is ends up being kind of a client personal preference, but I usually try to lowercase any of the words that are two letters or smaller um, in a headline or in a subhead, unless it's the very first word. So in this case, it would be at and a, you would just lowercase those two. It just creates a little bit more interest in, in the headline itself. And then um, those to me often kind of look weird to be head all capitalized. Um, and then the other thing is I think keep our oceans clean period. Oh, no, I think it is a comma. Is it a comma? It's a comma. Clean, comma, one piece at a time, period. Or it could be, maybe it's a dash, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think your punctuation is, is fine. Um, I would just maybe lowercase the at and the a and then create like do your part could be bigger and then um, I would maybe move keep our oceans clean up a little bit so that there was equal amount of space around the bottle between the two oh, yeah. blocks of text and then learn more which is kind of the final call to action can just hang out at the bottom by itself um, and I like your white the white that you've added um, I think it's interesting with those triangles just to add a little bit of texture and maybe consider adding um, some white to your text too, just to break it up so it's not all black. Yeah. I had, yeah. that was like the biggest, this is like the, the text has been like the biggest challenge is like finding out what looks the best. Like in my peer review, um, there was suggested that like making them, my text white or like a lot lighter would help it stand out a lot more because um, in my original, it was a lot darker Mm -hmm. right like, and so I was like and I was like trying to change the color of the text you know sampling colors or like you know and it was just very difficult so I like well I'll try just lightening it up the picture and so that seems to help so I was like definitely. now yeah <laughs> like now what <laughs> it definitely helps but I think you could use a little bit of white in there too I mean it could even be um keep our brushes clean one piece at a time but that that subhead is white, do your part stays black, learn more stays black, um, and just try that and see what happens. It's kind of cool because keep our oceans clean and then the text is white, which is kind of clean. So, um, you know, it's kind of like a, um, what's it called? Uh, oh, what's it called that like brain, when they subliminal messaging, you know? to your advertisement to have that line of text be white or a lighter color. And if the white looks too bright, you know, try like a real pale aqua. Like you could sample some of the brighter parts of the ocean and see how that looks. And maybe um, that works too, but play with it and then work on your um, alignment. Cause I think every, I think all the text is a little bit to the right. Is there something that can like, I can use to help me kind of line it up? Yeah, so if you select your layers, um, if you shift select them, all the ones that have um, text on them, then your align, um, you can align them using the line um, feature in the control panel, which I can see them up there right now. The um, To the right of show transform controls, all those little things, it's left align, centered, right align, those are all to align um, your layers or your whatever is on your layer, but you just have to select um, more than one thing in order for it to align. And then when you move things around on with when you move things around with your move tool within your workspace um, under view, if you have smart guides turned on. On here, let's see here. Show. The show. Let me look and see here if your guides are on. It should give you some, when you move things around, it should give you kind of an alignment um, 
tool should kind of show up. Grab a layer for me with your move tool. Yep, click on that and then shift click um, the one below it as well. Oh, I don't want to do that. So click. There, sorry. So then, yeah, then it should center it. But I think maybe did it do anything? Oh, it's locked. Yeah, because you have a locked layer. That's what I was going to say. You might it have has a colored layer. layer. I don't want to do that. One anyways, yeah. You can also option click, I think, if you want to skip a layer to go up to. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, though, your text itself, if you select it with your text tool and then use your, um, it looks like it's, so do you see in your control panel now how it's left aligned text within that text box? If you can use the center tool, um, you can center the text itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to need to do, because then once Otherwise, it's going to align everything to its outside text box. So I would align everything center, then select those three layers and use the align um, option, and then move them to the center of your app. And that's going to give you real accurate, real centered text instead of one that you're just eyeballing, you know? Yeah. All righty. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Does anyone else, I talked a lot on that ad. Does anyone else have feedback for Riley? Uh, I'm not sure if this is already mentioned. Anything that I can really think of that might, could be fixed a little bit is how um, the forocean.com part is slightly crowded against all those triangles and stuff compared to how open the triangles are in the space in between that and do your part. Mm -hmm. um, you might even make uh, learn more at forocean.com smaller. That's sometimes how these ads are. They can yeah. have small text for that. So that's a suggestion. Something, I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but you, we were talking about capitalization earlier. I feel like in the keep our oceans clean one piece at a time, having like everything capitalized, like it's a, like it's a title would be better if it was capitalized like a sentence instead. I think the whole line. Yeah, just have it like K be capitalized and then the rest not. Mm -hmm. That's an idea too. You can try that, Riley. Let's see. Thanks. Otherwise, probably for consistency, you want to capitalize the M and more and then lowercase the at and the A and see how that looks. So you got a couple options with your text. Yeah, really cool ad though. Does anyone else have feedback for Riley? All right, thank you Riley for sharing that. All right, does anyone else want to share their ad for feedback? Otherwise we can wrap up this portion of our Zoom and just tackle whether anyone has any general um, Photoshop questions. I have a question about mine. I did a little, something a little different with it where I used free images. I used like a faces of um, this image of someone sleeping in a train center, but I used like error examples. Like I use a home, like a house and a dog. Is that allowed or? Yep, do you want that's to completely fine. Also, I know a lot of people had like marks of like, you know, people of like, like, you know, companies. They're basically saying they got inspiration from. So. Yep. You can do that as well. Yep. Yeah, but kind of very quickly because I was like, I just realized I lost it. Hit me a fix now. It's not a requirement, but it does add a little something. Yeah, if you want to yeah, add sure. that to it. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, does anyone have any Photoshop questions or any other questions? Otherwise, that's it. We're a wrap for week eight. I'll be around all week. I won't be grading anything until after Sunday um, as far as your final project. And then we move on on Monday to Illustrator, which is going to be a lot of fun. So if you guys are all good, I'm going to dismiss class for this week and I'll stick around until I'm sure everybody's had their questions answered. Thank you guys. You're doing great.